How's it going guys? I'm your host Carbon Gaming. Welcome back to another Adventure Quest video and for today's video we are going to be talking about houses inside of Adventure Quest. Everything from what is a house, where to get a house and why you should get a house. You can find it all inside of this video. Keep in mind that the information inside of this video is accurate at the time of this recording which is 28 September 2021 as the game continues to receive weekly updates depending on the time you may be watching this video which may be weeks, months or even years after this video uh, is first released the information inside of the video may or may not have already been outdated so do keep that in mind but without further ado let us jump right into the video Houses are basically just like any other item that you can buy inside of the game and store inside your inventory. The only caveat is that you can only have one house at any point of time. So there are two types of houses inside of the game and all houses inside of the game cost Z tokens. In order to buy a house, if you don't already own one, then you can just click on the house button here on the bottom right hand corner of the screen and this will take you straight to the shop. However, you can also access the house shop by going to the travel map, sailing east, Sailing Southeast and then going to Duran, School of Thought and Temple of Hope. And then you want to click on this building over here, Shops, and then click on the building on the left hand side over here. So here you can buy Home or Guard, so you can click on it and this will take you to the housing shop. So by clicking on the house, houses button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, it will teleport you straight into the shop if you don't already own a house. Right, so the cheapest house that you can buy is the Forest 10, okay? That is the first type of house that you can buy. It's basically uh, just a house with nothing special. You can have guards, it gives you extra storage space, and on top of that, it earns interest, as well as it gives you paintings, and sometimes it gives you potions as well. The second type of house is Estate. Okay, so estates are a special type of house that has another added mini game to it as well as additional benefits. We'll go through that in more detail later on. So apart from all of the houses here, you can see here the cheapest house costs only 188 tokens and the cheapest estate costs 2,326 tokens with the most expensive estate costing 17,500 tokens. Apart from this shop here, there is also one more place where you can get a house and that is you want to go back to battle on first. Click on your travel map. Sail East, Travel South, and you want to click on Haven over here. The same place where you do your Neko, uh, your Neko training, you can click on the Neko House Shop over here. And over here, we have a few more houses for you to choose from, which is the Celestial Haven series of houses as well as estates. So after buying your house, you are unable to go to it until you have finish clearing the trees and that's basically another way of saying you need to fight through 11 random monsters that scale to your level. Alright so benefits like the interest rate as well as the extra inventory slots are immediate the moment you buy the house so you actually do not need to clear trees to gain those two benefits but for other stuff like uh, potion refills, accessing your house paintings, uh, accessing your house guards, anything that's estate related as well as the ability to visit your neighbors and get any other special items that your house might come with like a temporary weapon or accessing a special mo a monster fight all of that stuff you do need to clear off the trees before you can access your house and gain access to those benefits so i will highly recommend everyone to go ahead and clear the trees to build the house first but if you're just buying the house solely for the interest rate and if you're lazy like me then technically speaking you don't need to clear the trees at all now, there are many reasons why you may want to buy a house inside of the game, but perhaps the number one reason why is because it is the best investment for your Z tokens in the entire game. How this works is that when you first buy a house and you sell it back immediately, it will be at 90% of its original uh, cost price, okay? But if you let it wait and accumulate over time, the selling price of your house increases by 0.5% each week. Meaning to say, after 20 weeks, you can sell off your house at no loss whatsoever. But if you choose to wait beyond that 20 weeks then you will gain a profit when you choose to sell off your house and the best part is that this interest accumulates indefinitely and you don't even need to be active in order for the interest rate to grow meaning to say you can literally buy a house on an account come back 10 years later to see that you have made a massive profit on the house keep in mind that this 0.5 percent interest is the same regardless of whichever house you buy so if you buy a cheap house or an expensive house it's still going to be 0.5 percent increase of its uh cost price every single week meaning to say if you buy a cheaper house then uh the interest rate will still be 0.5 percent but it will be 0.5 percent of this 100 
88 tokens mean to say you're not gaining that many tokens each week but say for example if you buy a sky castle mansion estate which costs 17,500 tokens instead it will still be 0.5 percent but it'll be 0.5 percent of 17,500 tokens mean to say you'll be earning more tokens every single week so if you have the tokens i'll highly suggest you to invest in more expensive houses so that you can grow your z tokens more quickly that being said though if you are a free to play player still go ahead and get the cheapest house because you will still be able to earn z tokens that way albeit at a slower rate compared to the more pay to win players who are able to afford the more expensive houses us. Next reason why you may want to buy a house is because it comes with extra inventory slots and all of the houses come with extra slots for every single category even the cheapest house gives two extra storage slots for every single item category and if you look at the prices here you're getting two times eight you're getting 16 inventory slots and each inventory slots cost you 100 z token so there are eight categories altogether you're getting a grand total of 16 slots which means it will have costed you 1600 tokens instead if you were to buy the inventory slots separately but if you buy a house let's say the cheapest one for example it only costs 188 tokens the biggest house does give you an extra 20 inventory slots and if you are a hoarder like me then you definitely want to get as many inventory slots as possible to store all of your items they are a great way of getting more inventory slots at a cheaper price but uh as the houses go down okay as you get the more expensive houses it becomes not as valuable but keep in mind that the bigger houses like the estates they are giving you something extra apart from the inventory slots as opposed to the cheapest house which doesn't really offer you a lot but it does give the best value in terms of uh, inventory slots. Apart from the three cheapest houses, namely the Forest Tent, Darkovia Tent, as well as the Celestial Haven Tent, all houses give you the ability to refill potions ranging from 5 all the way up to 25 potions for the most expensive house, which is the house that I currently have. They are by far the fastest and most convenient way of refilling your potions. All you have to do is head to the respective potion refilling place inside of your house, click on it and your potions will be automatically refilled. So some of the best farming spots inside the game are only available if you have a house. They can come from either the visit neighbor button over here which is available to every single house inside the game or from the house paintings here and house paintings are only available uh, for houses that are not the three cheapest houses that I mentioned in the point before this one. So the three cheapest houses do not actually have the ability to store paintings but all other houses apart from those three have the ability for you to buy and store paintings and of course you do need to have uh, bought the corresponding painting for the monster that you want to farm with and these do cost z tokens as well but i will not go into too much detail on what are good uh farming spots here inside of this video instead you guys can go ahead and check out my exp and leveling guide as well as my goal farming guide if you guys want to find what are the best farming spots inside of the game and last but not least, we have estates. So estates are sort of like a special mini game inside of houses that offer a slew of extra functionalities. Keep in mind that estates are only available to the more expensive houses and uh, houses that come with the estate are denoted by having the name estate at the end of their names so the cheapest estate house that you can buy actually costs 2326 tokens but uh in order to buy the estate buildings you will need even more z tokens than that because all of the estate buildings cost z tokens and the fastest way to get to the house estate building shop is to just click on the estate shop building that comes with all of the houses that has a built-in estate with them so First of all, you, there are these resource production buildings over here and you have four different resources that you can produce, namely food, wood, stone and energy. There are general buildings like this, woodcutter shack as well as the fishing pond and the vegetable garden. All these resource production buildings are available to owners of every single estate. There are also certain specialized resource production buildings that are only available to certain models of estate. So let's say here I have the Sky Castle Mansion estate. I get this special Sky Castle wheat field that produces not only food but energy as well. If you have a Darkovia Mansion estate or a Celestial Haven estate then your special resource production building will be different from mine. So these resources can be used for upgrading 
buildings as well as wall which we'll go through in more detail later next up we have the resource storage buildings you will need this in order to increase the maximum amount of storage uh, you can hold for resources and there are five uh, storage buildings currently if you buy all of them and they can go up to a maximum level of 15 for resource production buildings they can go up to a maximum level of 10 and storage buildings are the longest Storage buildings take the longest time to upgrade inside of the entire estate minigame. So I highly recommend you to get the storage buildings first and upgrade them as soon as they can because they can take over a month to upgrade from level 1 all the way up to the max level. Alright, so next up we have these uh, buildings here, namely the Beanstalk as well as the cave which gives you extra estate plots so for this house uh having both of them maxed out i can get a maximum of 45 estate plots so i have 15 here to start off with the beanstalk once fully level up gives me another 15 plots on top and the cave once fully level up gives me another 15 estate plots on the bottom so currently there is no way you can make use of all 45 plots because we don't have that many estate buildings for you to use but i'm sure they'll come up with more in the future Next thing we have is the trade hut over here. You can use the trade hut to trade for resources. Say for example, if I'm running low on food, I can trade uh, some of my wood if, I'm ex if I have an excess of wood. And I can basically trade for every single uh, resource. Obviously, uh, at the lower tiers here, you guys can see the it is not the same so i can trade 25 wood for 23 wood which means if i were to trade for this amount i'm actually losing out two resource whereas for the more expensive one here i'm losing out on three resource here i'm losing out on five resource the most efficient one is to go for 300 because that way you're not losing out on any resources and you definitely want to level up your trade hard as quickly as possible as well so that you are able to trade resources without losing out on any resources whatsoever Next, we also have stat trainers. Okay, these are sort of like a luxury item. They are not really a must-have. Okay, they provide a very fast way of training and untraining your stats and can save you a lot of time if you want to experiment with different builds like me. So you can just click a single button to train up all of your stats or to untrain all of your stats. And all you have to do is just to key in your login password if you want to untrain. And for training, all you have to do is uh, just click on how many points you want to train. On top of that, by leveling up these buildings, they also give you a small discount in stat training. And uh, really, it's not so much about the discount, but about how much time you save because you don't have to spend hours on training and retraining every single thing by going the usual route of retraining your stats now the next estate building that i want to talk about uh is the mega war portal over here and this one this allows you to send armies to go to war you will need the tresco and the Kairula building as well and for each of them you can level up their reputation I believe the max reputation for each one is 10 both of them come in two separate paintings so you will need to get both of them if you want to make use of both of them so what this does is that during times uh, when there are war so there's a war going on right now which is the war between shadows I can make use of this building to send armies to go ahead and attack so I can send a full army or a half army and you can see here it causes some uh, resources depending on what you send this one causes and energy and food and this one uh, also causes energy and food so the more reputation you have for each planet the stronger your attack power and this is by far the most efficient way of using your estate resources to gain bonus exp and go during battle so you will get exp as well but because i'm already maxed level, i'm not going to be getting any exp but you can see if i click send it will give me it will say that my forces defeat a random way uh, number of waves of enemies and this is a very fast way to earn gold inside of the game okay uh, by doing absolutely nothing at all okay it's not technically a fast way to earn gold but yeah you can just earn gold by doing nothing because otherwise once you have all your estate buildings maxed out you have no other use for your resources so you want to use them during times of war uh, and send out your armies to go ahead and get those wins and earn free gold for you just by basically doing nothing you can also do this with this uh, guard tower building and guard tower building uses your guards so depending on uh, what guards you have how many guards you have uh, it will cost a different amount of resources for each uh, time that you want to send it out so i have quite a lot of guards that's why the resource cost is a bit more expensive and depending on what guards you have uh, the attack power is also uh, different so the guards here uh, they are not as efficient as your 
uh, portal army so i highly recommend you guys to go ahead and send out portal armies instead of your guards because guards they are not very efficient resource wise but of course if you're maxed out on me and uh are almost reaching the gold cap i guess this doesn't really matter but if you're really trying to maximize the amount of gold that you can gain uh per resource use then you want to use the portal armies instead of your guard armies the guard tower there's another function which is to prevent your estate buildings from getting attacked so you can see here uh, there's nothing uh, here that says that any of my estate buildings are getting attacked and that is because I have sufficient number of guards so what are guards? guards are basically sort of uh, they are self-explanatory they are guards that guard your estate buildings from being attacked you need a certain amount of guards in order to prevent your estate buildings from getting attacked completely and the more buildings you have the higher level they are the stronger your guards need to be or you need to have more guards there are no max level guards that cause gold yeah and all of the guards that cause gold they actually are not met are very low level and actually do not help at all even if you buy out all of the gold uh, guards you will not be able to prevent your estate buildings from getting attacked so you will need some z token guards in order to prevent your estate buildings from getting attacked i highly recommend getting the level 150 ones because the power of the guards uh is not dependent on the monster but rather is solely dependent on the guards level so just get the level 150 ones in order to get the most bang out of your buck if you want to increase your power so that uh you your your estate buildings do not get attacked if they get attacked then they will stop functioning say for example if a resource production building gets attacked it will stop producing resources until you manually go in and defeat the monster meaning to say you have to fight a random encounter monster and defeat it before uh, the resource production can continue so that is very annoying and you have to check in on it every few days if you don't have enough guards but if you have enough guards like me then uh, you will literally never get attacked at all and I literally don't need to check on it it'll continue to produce resource for as long as my uh, storage isn't full now the last type of building that I want to talk about is uh, this mute okay wait there's another type sorry this eatery building it gives me an extra production boost to all my resource uh, production building so this is really good to have and it's like an added bonus on top of all of your resource production buildings so I highly recommend you to get all resource production buildings first before you get the eatery its maximum level is level 20 and uh, this is a great way of in further boosting the amount of your resource production right so the last building that I want to talk about is the museum over here so if you are a guardian you get one free golden gift box every single month that you are active and by active that means that for each month you will need to have logged in and saved at least one battle or won at least one battle in order for the game to count you as being active so <clears throat> If you have a guardianship and if you have a house, highly recommend you to buy the museum building. It does not need to be level 10, so technically speaking, you don't need to level up this building at all. Uh, because the more you level it up, the more resources it consumes, I think. I can't really remember for sure, but... Yeah, you don't need to level up this building at all. It will still give you one free golden gift box every single month that you are and uh that you are active as long as you have a guardianship. Whether it's level one, level five, or level ten, it doesn't matter. You still only get one free golden gift box per month. Alright, so that's it for all of the estate stuff, I think. So that is it for this video guys my guide to houses and of adventure quest for 2021 let me know down in the comments below if you found this video helpful or if you think there's anything i missed out or anything else you'd like to add on to the video please do let me know down in the comments below i'll be sure to pin a comment uh adding on any of your other stuff that i may or may not have missed out in the video and yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed the video and if you have found it helpful be sure to give this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe to this channel if you guys would like to see more of such future content td next time i'm your host Carbon Gaming, peace out.